What's up guys, it's me Baku. Uh, last month was my birthday, and some awesome people got me some awesome presents. And this is one of them. This is the Spyderco Chaparral. The Chaparral is named after a bush in the northwestern United States that's known to survive really harsh droughts and fires and can regenerate. Uh, it's the first, the first in the line of gentlemen's folders, and it's the thinnest mid-sized clip-it knife. You can see right here, it's actually designed after the sage. And um, as Sal Glesser said, who is the founder of Spyderco and the designer of this knife, um, whenever they, it's a mini, it's, a, it's basically a mini sage, but um, whenever they miniaturize a design, they don't just miniaturize the whole knife. They actually start from scratch because they don't want to mess up its ergonomics. And um, this, er, they did it right. They did it right with this knife. Uh, the steel is a CPM S30V steel made right here in New York. As for you people who know knife steel, that's a that's a that's a good steel. It's a super steel for the people who don't know it. It's a really good steel. It's very um, erosion resi uh, corrosion resistance, and um, it's pretty durable. It's the only main um, complaint about it is that it's pretty hard to sharpen for some people, which make some people like S30 um, 154cm better. The handle is carbon fiber, but it's not just normal carbon fiber. It's actually textured. It's got a texture to it. You see all these things? Yeah, they're actually raised. You can't see it here, but they are raised. Uh, it does have aluminum skeletonized handles. If I shine a light in here, you might be able to see that. Maybe. Yeah, you see those holes? It is skeletonized. <coughs> uh, two hex screws, pivot point, clip. Dual uh, clip points. Both of them tip up carry. It is a back lock design as opposed to the original stage. This is a liner lock design. It's made in Taichung, Taiwan. Oh, it's over here. Uh, Taichung, Taiwan. So for people who don't like foreign made knives, um, you might not want this knife. Honestly, they have good quality control and this is an excellent knife. So it doesn't really matter. Um, ergonomics. It does have dual jimping over here at the finger coil and the thumb ramp. And when you hold it like this in this grip, it doesn't feel like it's going to come out. You stab or anything. You just move this up and down it doesn't come out. Uh, this finger control is very good. It, it fits my hand perfectly. I wear small to medium gloves. And the ergonomics of this knife, you can just see how it will just form onto the, the hand when it closes. just makes for a very comfortable knife. Uh, I consider this an EDC knife. Um, not a, not really a survival knife. You can't, I'm sure it'll be able to cut into wood since it's a super steel, but it's very thin and I don't think it'll it won't hold up to much batoning or much chopping but it is a super seal so if you really want to I mean, go ahead but it's an expensive knife I uh, just want to point out something here this area right here it's part of the back lock but you can't even tell because it's so well made that it's flush you can barely see the line right there you can kinda see the line and when it comes out, you can't see it, you can barely see it, you can't feel it at all though. It's very well made, high quality knife. It is a gentleman's folder, which means it's uh it's made lightweight. It's uh the late the the weight on the Spyderco website says that it's two point five ounces. Uh the specs are hold on let me just get to the inches for it. This is the inches, okay. The blade itself, starting from the handle, which is the, where knives are considered to start the blade all the way to the tip, is nearly three inches. If you start right here at the sharpened cutting edge, it's almost two and a, uh, two and a half inches, almost. It's overall, overall length. 
is about six and a quarter and it's closed length can't really tell from here okay closed length is about three and a three and a half inches it is a clip and knife so it has have this wire clip design which at first I thought it wasn't very good I like the flat uh, Spyderco clips better but in the min minimalist way it's actually pretty nice looking and it's you know it takes away a little bit of weight <coughs> um, let's see the knife right here it is a leaf shaped blade because it's uh, designed after the sage you can kinda see the rough finish on it it is a satin finish it doesn't have a mirror polish but um I think it makes it look kind of cool. It has a little bit of character to have these lines uh, just going across it. You can see the Spyderco logo, logo right there in Spyderco with the CPM S30V right here. I'm not sure what this logo is. I'm guessing it's Sal Glesser's logo because he's the one who designed this knife. And he's the founder of Spyderco. You can see where it's made Tai Chung, Taiwan right there. Um, this knife is very good for... Um, just walking the streets EDC because it is under three inches the blade and when cops do this they can't really you know they, they can't uh, say it's illegal because it doesn't go over the hand in New York uh, legal limit is four inches and I think in California legal limit is three inches so that's actually works for both states because <coughs> it is not it is not a gravity knife gravity knife means it can come out through gravity so a Bali song is an example of a gravity knife. This, if it came out when I did this, it would be a gravity knife, but it doesn't come out when I do that. It's not spring assisted, it is not automatic, it's fully manual. And uh, the thing is, it got me, I actually kind of took some time to get used to this whole Spyderco opening. It kind of felt like it wasn't natural to me because I've been using the Ontario Rat one for so long. But after a while, you can actually flick it out pretty quickly. And you can even do this thing I found out that I could do. Where you put your finger right here in the spider hole. Put your middle finger right on the jimping right there. I don't I don't want to shake the camera up too much. But uh, you can deploy it by just shaking it down like like that. And um, I thought that was kind of cool. Might not be practical in the combat. But uh, I don't see this fulfilling a very combat role. Combat heavy role. I don't consider it an equalizer. It could be an equalizer, but since the blade is so small, you don't have too much reach. So it's better as just an EDC knife. I have been EDCing it for a couple of weeks, so it's a little bit dirty. Well, you can't really see the dirt on it. I kind of, I, I take care of my knives, clean it up after a while. I haven't, I haven't um, sharpened it or anything, so this is, still has this factory edge on it, and it's still sharp. Um, here's some paper. This composition paper, oops, started on the unsharpened there, that's why. It's still very sharp. So as you can see, even after weeks of EDCing this knife, it's still sharp. I uh, kind of messed up there. But yeah, still very sharp. Not putting any pressure at all gliding through this paper so there you have it the Spyderco Chaparral it's very nice very classy it has an executive feel to it if you're looking for an EDC knife a nice very lightweight EDC knife um, you might want to consider the Spyderco Chaparral and um, that's it thanks for watching and uh, peace out home slice